All right, you're about to become a calculus professional because you're going to learn the most famous derivative rule of all time, and it's called the chain rule. But in our class, we're going to refer to it as the ninja. So if you look over here on the, ooh, if you look over here on the right, you see the chain rule in calculus symbolism. So let's ignore that and pretend that didn't even happen, and let's go look over here. You see y equals sine of 5x, and you'd say, well, you know what, I could do that derivative, and you'd write down cosine of 5x, and you would be wrong. How can that be? That seems like everything you've been taught by your calculus teacher. Well, the real answer is that. So what's going on there? Well, this thing right here is what we're going to refer to as the ninja. And you'd say, well, what the heck is the ninja? You see this shadow looming over here? That's the shadow of the ninja. And that ninja is sneaky, and it'll get you. Because guaranteed, every single person in calculus will take something like that, and as they're working fast, quickly, in the heat of battle, they will write that, and they'll think they're correct. But they're wrong. Because they've been ninja'd. They forgot to include the times 5. So our job is to figure out why do we have this times 5? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to start with an informal explanation, which is the one that I would suggest you implant into your brain. After we do that, we'll go back and look at this and see what the heck's going on. Ooh, look at that ninja just looming. All right, so what the deal is, is when I look at sine of 5x, my calculus brain is trained to notice that there are two layers to that problem. Let me zoom in here a little bit if I can. Okay. Sine of 5x has an outer layer, which is the sine function, and an inner layer, which is the 5x. I view the layers as this. 5x is a function that is living inside of a sine function. So I just have to train my brain to recognize layers. Up until today, or this video, you've not seen layers on your calculus problems. So the derivative is the derivative of the first layer, which is a cosine, and the derivative of the second layer, which is a 5. Now I used a u there. Um, and an x there. We'll talk about that here shortly, but my answer has to be written in x form because the symbolism says dy dx, the derivative of equation y that happens to be using variable x. All right, so now I'm using a u here just because for these two different functions I wanted to use different letters to show that I have different layers, but let's go uh, do this little Leibniz symbolism trick. If I were to take that first layer and do a derivative, it would be a dy du, oops, and that dy du would be cosine of u. And if I were to use the Leibniz symbolism here, it would be a du dx, because notice I called this equation u, u equals 5x and that equals 5. All right, so you wouldn't really do this when you're doing the problem. You may or may not do this because this helps. But anyway, watch this nice little trick. I showed you before. I'm going to zoom back out. I showed you before that this is the result of that. It's the derivative of the first layer, and this is the derivative of the inner layer. Well. That first layer has a dy du for a symbolism, so I'm going to write that right underneath there. The second layer has a du dx for a symbolism, so I'm going to write that underneath there. And holy moly, you might notice this. If I multiply these symbols, this in the denominator cancels with this in the numerator, and I get a dy dx. So the symbolism works out. So that might have been too much information for you. If it is too much information, just go by this. Look at the function. 
Does it have layers like one function living inside the other? If it does, write them down or put them firmly in your brain and your derivative is the derivative of the first layer times the derivative of the inner layer. That is called the chain rule because you're adding another chain or another link in the chain that is the derivative. I call it the ninja because that five is so sneaky, you miss it, you think you're right, and then <laughs> the five kills you and you didn't even know it. All right, sorry, this is a long video because now I owe it to you to give you the formal explanation because that's how a college professor or an AP test writer might like to do this. So before I get to the formal explanation, remember that this is the rule for the ninja or the chain rule. And technically, this occurs when we have a composite function. A composite function is when one function is living inside of another. We've done that in Algebra 2. So the formal explanation formal explanation says this is a composite function where I have f of x and g of x. So h of x, my composite function, is f of g of x. That's what that is. The formal rule says the derivative of a composite function is the derivative times the derivative. I don't know how to describe that any better. So if I look at f of g of x, and let's see. So I guess, let me write this down. So h of x equals sine of 5x. So when I do the derivative of f of g of x, it's cosine of 5x. When I do the derivative of g of x, the piece living inside, it's just five. So I may have butchered that explanation, but know this. The ninja chain rule is occurring when you see composite functions. So a clever AP test writer will give you some composite function information to see if you know what's going on with the chain rule. I advise that you always think about the layers and even write the layers on the side, and then you'll be just fine. Now I'm going to take you through three examples because the chain rule definitely needs some practice. Okay, our first example is y equals the square root of the tangent of x. That doesn't necessarily look like you have layers, but you really do. You have the layers, by the way, I did an eyeball adjustment. You have a u to the one half as an outer layer, and inside of that is the tangent function. Or put differently, the tangent function is living inside of the square root function. So now that I see the layers, I can get my derivative. I simply take the derivative of the outer layer, which is the square root function, and by the way, this would have a derivative of 1 half u to the negative 1 half power. 1 half u to the negative 1 half power. And now the tangent function, which was living inside the square root function, it also has a derivative. The tangent function has a derivative of secant squared. So I tack that on as the ninja. And... This is the part that people will easily forget. If you feel like it, go ahead and rewrite this because this is not very user friendly. So I could write this as one over two square roots of tangent of x. And then the secant squared x is in the numerator. So I could even do a little correction. This is just a more compact user friendly version of this. They're both correct. All right, let's go to a stealthy ninja right here. And I know 
that this ninja is so stealthy because you don't suspect it. You see that there's a secant function, but this function, 1 minus t, that's living inside secant, you don't even pay much attention to it because it seems so innocent and so um, not dangerous. But there's layers here. The secant function is the outer layer, and living inside the secant function is 1 minus t. So mentally I would say, okay, secant has a derivative of secant tangent, and I would probably be tempted to say, well, this thing doesn't have a derivative, but it really does. The derivative is negative 1. The derivative of 1 is a 0. The derivative of a t is 1, so minus 1. So when I do my derivative, the derivative of secant is secant blah 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 tangent blah blah blah. And then this piece right there that has a derivative of negative 1, and I tack that on. This is the ninja, and that's a deadly ninja because you didn't even suspect him. All right, now let's do one final problem, and there's a new wrinkle here. It's cosine of 4x squared. Wait a second. There's something weird happening here. Cosine is living inside of a square root function, but 4x squared is living inside a cosine function. We've got three layers. Holy moly. This is why you need to think of this as layers. I write out my layers so it looks like that. It's a square root style function. That's the outermost layer. Cosine's living inside the square root function, and 4x squared is living inside the cosine function. If I took the time to do Leibniz symbolism, that derivative would be a dy du, then a du dw, and a dw dx. All right, well now if I go ahead and take the derivative, I can kind of mentally say derivative of the outer layer, the middle layer, and the inner layer. The outer layer is a square root function, so by the way, I could think of that as u to the 1 half. The derivative is 1 half u to the negative 1 half. Now I do the middle layer. That's a cosine of blah, blah, blah. Its derivative is negative sine of blah, blah, blah. And now I do the last layer, the innermost layer, which was a 4x squared. Its derivative is 8x. Uh, just to let Leibniz show off, what I would have here is a dy du times du dw times dw dx. And then if I do the canceling, this du cancels with that, this dw cancels with that, and I'm left with a dy in the numerator and a dx in the denominator. Leibniz symbolism works, or as Homer Simpson would say, math checks out. You've probably noticed that the ninja or the chain rule is very, very stealthy. You've got to practice these, all these homework problems, to see these layers and to train your brain to see the layers. And I would venture to say that probably 90% of the derivatives on an AP test will include some version of a ninja. Alrighty, thanks for sticking with this 14 minutes and 15 seconds.